so friends we have discussed about parallel voltage sources uh, related to melman's theorem so now we'll discuss about parallel current sources okay that arrangement and how melman's theorem uh, we can use that to convert it into a simple form so let us say we have uh, a circuit like this like uh, we have already shown number of current sources connected in parallel with a resistor that combination a number of such combinations we have okay So this is Rn, this is In, this is I3, this is R3, this is R2, this is I2, this is R1, this is I1. We have to determine the simplified equivalent circuit across these two terminals. So in that case, if we can convert it into this form, a simple not an equivalent circuit then it will become very easy so here the value of this Norton current is I1 I2 plus I3 the nth current and Rn is equal to this is like this okay R1 plus R2 plus sorry 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 this is not that this is parallel R1 parallel R2 parallel R3 by mistake I wrote this it is R1 parallel R2, parallel R3 up to the nth resistance. This is the value of this Norton equivalent circuit, the values associated, the Norton current and the Norton resistance. So how we got this results? Let us see. Let us say we have a circuit here. Again, we'll take only two current sources in two resistors, that arrangement, and we'll see how the same thing applies for any number of current sources, any number of resistors present. So is I1, R1, I2, R2. You have to find the Norton circuit. Now we know that in order to find out the Norton current, what we do, the normal approach is to short circuit that two terminals and then find the current flowing through it, the short circuited current, which is the Norton current. Now, one important thing associated with electrical circuits is that current always takes the minimum resistance path okay minimum resistance path short circuit means resistance is zero nothing open circuit means it is infinite resistance so obviously all of the current associated with this circuit will flow through this short circuited path okay it is simply like this like this this and that will be 
I1 plus I2. This is the important concept here. Current always takes the minimum resistance path. This is the minimum resistance path, this sh short circuited path. Resistance is 0. So all of these resistors, R1, R2 or any number of resistors connected, they become negligible. They go out of the picture. Okay, All of the current will flow through this short circuited path. And that is the Norton current, I1 plus I2. So if n number of current sources are present, it will become nth current. Now, if we want to determine the uh, equivalent resistance, the Norton resistance, let's say, for this circuit, okay, for this circuit. Now we know that if in order to determine the equivalent resistance, we have to deactivate the independent sources. So voltage sources are short circuited, current sources are open circuited. So here this circuit, when we deactivate the current sources or open circuit the current sources, it will look something like this. R2. So here Rn, the equivalent resistance is R1 parallel R2, which is 1 by 1 by R1 is 1 by R2. So if n, is, n number of resistors are present, then that will be R1 parallel R2 uh, up to the nth resistor which is 1 by 1 by R1, so 1 by R2 up to the nth resistor, this. Because we have open circuited the current sources, so they go out of the picture, so simply we have parallelly connected resistors and simple equivalent resistance like we uh, calculate the equivalent resistance of a number of resistors connected in parallel. So this is the whole thing. This is the result. Now, there are some important things that you should uh, consider when it comes to uh, Millman, you know, equivalent circuit determination. That let us say we have, um, you know, for the uh, parallel voltage sources, we have such kind of a setup like this. We have like this, let's say. We have like this one thing, then we have something like this, okay? Some important points, okay, which are very important to consider. Let's say this is V1, this is V2, R1, R2, R3. So here we have to determine VTH and RTH. So RTH is very simple, simple R1 parallel R2 parallel R3. But VTH, what will be the value? Now we know VTH is V1 by R1 plus V2 by R2 plus V3 by R3 divided by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. We know that. But here, there are some important things that you should consider. See, here the polarity of the voltage V1 is plus minus, okay, plus minus. That's why here we have this plus sign. But if you see here, V2 is minus plus, opposite polarity, okay, minus plus. That's why here it will be minus V2 it will be minus V2 by R2. Suppose here it would have been V1 is equal to let's say 10 volt, V2 is 12 volt. Then it would have been minus 12 volt plus 10 volt. Another important thing, here in this branch there is no voltage source. That means it will simply become V3 will be 0. V3 is equal to 0 volt. This. Okay. Similarly, when it comes to parallel current sources, 
like this. Let us say we have an arrangement like this. Okay, we have um, So here normally the uh, total current, the Norton equivalent current is I1 plus I2 up to the nth current, whatever they are present. But here if you pay attention, the direction of I2 is opposite with respect to I1. I1 is upward, upward arrow, it is downward arrow. So here the Norton current will be I1 minus I2 because upward sign is considered positive, downward sign is considered negative. Similarly, as we have done here, this is considered positive, this is considered negative because current always flows away from the positive towards the negative. Similarly here, away from the positive towards the negative. The same thing follows here also. Okay. And here, this uh, third branch, this third thing, only R3 is there, I3 is not there. So obviously I3 is 0. Okay. I3 is 0, 0 ampere, no current. That's why it doesn't matter because it is not present here. So these are some important things uh, associated with parallel voltage sources and parallel current sources related to sign convention that you have to bear in mind when you make the calculations. So here uh, we have discussed about the, you know, the proof of the results that we obtained for parallel current sources and some important points associated with the calculations related to sign conventions that we have to consider while doing while solving these questions you know where we apply Millman's theorem okay so I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much